Now let's continue with the small intestine and let's learn about the microscopic anatomy or the histology. So the walls of the small intestine, the mucosa, are folded into what we call circular folds. Um, these add surface area and also kind of create speed bumps so that the chyme that's moving through, remember it's a really soupy, very liquidy mix because of all the secretions from the stomach, the chyme kind of slows down a little, doesn't rush through because these circular folds slow it down. There are a lot more circular folds in the duoden duodenum and the jejunum than, the, than in the ileum, but they are numerous all the way through. Notice that the mucosal layer is folded, the submucosal layer folds with it, but the muscularis doesn't fold, okay? Now, this is what it looks like on a microscope slide. So here's the muscularis externa. This is the mucosa, and this layer here is the submucosa, okay? Now, the structures that are on top that make up the mucosa these little finger-like projections are called villi. So each circular fold is covered with these tiny little villi that provide even more surface area for absorption. And uh, those, the microvilli, have a really interesting structure. Each one has a, or sorry, the villi, not the microvilli, the villi. Each one has a capillary bed inside of it, and inside that, it has a lacteal. A lacteal is a capillary for the lymphatic system. The lacteals are going to absorb excess fluid that oozes out of or diffuses out of the uh, capillaries and is not absorbed back in on the venous side of the capillary bed. Lacteals in the digestive system are also going to absorb fats. So think about these epithelial cells here for a moment. And you remember that all cells have a plasma membrane made out of phospholipids. Well, phospholipids bind perfectly easily with other fat molecules. And so any fat molecules in the lumen don't have to go through the cells through um, channels or anything. They can actually just diffuse directly through the plasma membrane of these cells. So fats then don't um, absorb the same way. A lot of them end up going through. They get absorbed into the lymphatic system, and then these lymphatic vessels carry this and then uh, carry it into the lymphatic system and then take it to the uh, circulatory system where the excess fluid and the fats are dumped into the circulatory system. And that happens uh, up at the uh, brachiocephalic veins. The um, cells lining the uh, villus have a border on the edge called covered with even more surface area and these little extensions are called microvilli. So these cells are simple columnar epithelium. You can see there's lots of goblet cells interspersed in here, these little orange things. Uh, the microvilli gives us even more surface area for the absorption and it's these cells, these um, enterocytes, these uh, simple columnar epithelial cells with the microvilli that actually do the nutrient absorption. So they're gonna have channels for amino acids and nucle nucleotides and sugars, and they're gonna, the fats are actually gonna diffuse through these cells. Now, the, all of the microvilli together on these cells give it a kind of a fuzzy appearance on a microscope slide, and it's called a brush border because it looks like a little brush. So when we look at this on a microscope slide, this is a villus here, um, and you can see this little fuzzy edge. That's the microvilli. That's together the brush border. We've also got goblet cells in here making mucus, and then the, um, uh, the blood vessels and some of the lamina propria connective tissue. This larger space right here, that's actually the inside of the lacteal. Okay. 
This is a scanning electron micrograph. So you can actually see these tiny, tiny little microvilli, uh, but we have to be at 18,000 magnification to see them. All right, now the cells lining, we talked about the um, enterocytes or the simple columnar cells that do the absorption. Goblet cells, of course, create mucus. That's their job. Uh, there are also, down below the villi, there are these little intestinal crypts or intestinal glands. Uh, they're also called the crypts of Lieberkuhn, who discovered them. And like the gastric pits or the gastric glands in the stomach, these have a bunch of cells that secrete both into the lumen and into the bloodstream. So we have um, gland cells that synthesize um, peptidase in a form of peptidase that's going to break down proteins, big break peptide bonds. And then enteroendocrine cells, just like in the stomach, that secrete hormones into the bloodstream. Uh, and that, that's what that is. Okay. Um, the hormones released into the bloodstream are going to slow down the digestive processes so that the chyme that's traveling through the small intestine slows down and has more time against the surface area to do more absorption. Excuse me. Um, this video uh, is a really interesting a visual tour through the tissues of uh, the intestine, the intestinal wall into the intestinal crypt. So we're looking at the circular folds here, okay? And remember, those are covered with villi. Here's the villi. They look like little fingers sticking up on the circular fold. And then, I forgot to turn the captions on. Uh, on the villi, we have the individual cells. Um, and we can see the capillary inside. And we can see the crypt. Okay, There are also stem cells down here that create the new cells to line the villus. Because remember, these cells are going to be destroyed quite often in their uh, exposure to the outside world. So now it's showing the stem cells making new cells to line the villus, and you can see those cells developing the microvilli as they extend out of the crypt and move up into the villus. Isn't that cool? It's so Kind of looks like a snake, doesn't it? So those stem cells are creating all of the cells that are going to line this villus. And then as they break off, they're shed as they die and get old. They're shed and then digested by you and the parts of them reabsorbed through those the cells that replace them to uh, be reused to, and recycled to make more uh, cells. Isn't that interesting? And they only live for a few days. OK, uh, that's that. All right, so here's our model showing the layers of the tissues. This is a villus, this whole structure here. Each of these is a villus. You can see there's some connective tissue. And then under that, there's a capillary bed. And then within the capillary bed, there's the lacteal. And then the capillaries, the veins, the lacteals, all fuse into larger vessels in the submucosa. Okay, so here's the intestinal crypt, um, the muscularis mucosa, the submucosa, the muscularis externa with two layers. And then remember about our myenteric nerve plexus. And then the outside, uh, as long as we're in the uh, jejunum and the ilium, is a serosa. Next up, we will meet the appendix.